Yud Bet Yud Gimel, and we're learning about our friend the Benini, and why the Benini is not a tzaddik. Okay, and the last thing we okay, we're going to start on page thirty six on top. The bottom is fifty six, and we're going to start four lines from the top of the page. One. Okay, now the Rebbe is saying that the Benini is one who doesn't sin and therefore it doesn't say Zev is a Moshlam. Both the Yetzir Tev and the Yetzir Hara control the Benini. It's only Zev is a Sheikh and they're judged. Why? Because the Benini is never dictated by the Yetzir Hara. The Benini never sins. That means the Yetzir Hara never controls in the thought, speech, and action. But he's a judge. That means the unique, because the Benini has an effort Shabbat, because he has the Yetzirah, it's constantly throwing ideas into his head to sin. The Benini, if he would invite it in, entertain it, even for a split second, he's already at Asha. But the Benini immediately gets rid of it. So if so, why isn't he attacking? So we learned last week that because the Benini is like a Russia, Hayei Benachov Kid Asha, why is he like the Rasha? Because the Rasha has the Yetzirah and the Benini has the Yetzirah. The Tzaddik doesn't have a Yetzirah. So yes, in behavior, he's like the Tzaddik. But in level, he has the Yetzirah. The Rasha has the Yetzirah. He's like the Rasha. But Kid Rasha. Okay? And therefore, Dr. Rebbe, the last thing we know, Dr. Rebbe explains the Gemara that even if everybody tells you, you're a Tzaddik, Hayei Beinechav Kid Rasha. It should be in your own eyes, not like a Russia. Not the Russia. Because after that, that's the contradiction. In other places, it says, don't be a Russia in your own eyes. It means, kid Russia, you should think you're a Benini, and the Benini is like a Russia. Now, why? And now, the last thing we learned was, now, the Rebbe says, the Benini, the longer they're alive, the more they eat, the more they sleep, the more they, the stronger the Nefshabamas gets. And he says like this. Even a person whose whole desire is a tater, he learns a whole day. And he learns tater day and night for the right purposes to Hashem. This is not at all a proof that the evil was thrown out. The fact that you learn 24 7 doesn't mean you don't have a Yetzirah. Ah, you're learning all day? He says, no. El yachali, yes, it could be. Shemohu sevatsmu sehu betakfehu begudal sebe mekeme bechol asmol. It could be that the nefesh abamis is full steam in the left side of the heart, which is the dwelling place of the nefesh abamis. But actually, so why doesn't he sin? In the garments, which are machshava, dibur, amaisa, thought, speech, and action. Of nefesh habamis of the animal soul, and a mislashim b'mayach, like we learned, the garments, the yetzahara doesn't control the mind or the speech or the action. But shari voyagu, why doesn't it control thought, speech, or action? Mipne Hashem, like because of what we learned before, the godly power, shenosan shlita umem shola that gives the jurisdiction and control l'mayach al aleph for the mind over the heart. Okay, so basically, the Rebbe is saying that you can be learning 24 7. That doesn't mean you don't have enough Shabbamas. Your behavior is great. You're thinking Torah, speaking Torah, doing Torah. Bottom line is, you might have it. Therefore, the godly soul, which is in the brain, controls the small city, which is all the limbs of the body. She lavush in Merkava that the ba- the garment the body should be the garment and the chariot, meaning completely subservient. Lushleshalbusheha to the three garments, Shahi Islab Shubahem that the Nefeshuli kiss comes into, which are thought, speech, and action of Tayag Mitsasatera. But I'm gonna say a few more lines and I'm gonna explain. Ava Mohusabat Smutsa Shinefeshuli kiss, but the essence of the Nefeshuli kiss. And la shlita umem shala doesn't have the control and the jurisdiction. Al mohuse vatsmuse shel nefesh abamis babenu. He says like this: 
The only thing the godly soul controls by the Bainani is the thought, speech, and action. Thought, speech, and action. What it does con but the, what it doesn't control is this intellect and the feelings of the of the neshama. The nefesh abamis is full force in the body, except the nefesh abamis can't influence the body. How do you influence the body in thought, speech, and action? Because that the nefesh shulikis controls. The nefesh shulikis controls thought, speech, and action. The intellect and the midas, the nefesh or the kids by a bainani never conquers it. Only a tzaddik kills the nefesh shabamis, or the higher level of a tzaddik, like we learned before, transforms it to kedusha, but it doesn't control it. The bainani is not controlled. The essence of the nefesh shabamis is not controlled at all by a by the nefesh or the kids, by a bainani. It could be, and again, it could be sleeping. He's going to discuss this in a minute. It could be sleeping. That doesn't mean you destroyed it. And he says, um, he, when does the nefesh or the kiss control the nefesh abamis? At the time, the love of Hashem is revealed within him. Meaning, when the godly soul is very powerful and very strong, for instance, Beshas Hatfila, like you said before, a davening or creative or similar things. And therefore, the Nefesh kiss is revealed of, of the, because he's meditating into the greatness of Hashem. So the power of the Nefesh kiss is very revealed. Then he could put the Nefesh Abamas to sleep. But he didn't kill it. It's going to wake up. The Av Gamzeisapam. And even when he does put it to sleep, it's only controlling the nefesh abamis. like Hashem told Rivka with the twins in the body, one nation will be stronger than the next. Meaning, as the Gemara says, when Jews are strong, Asaph falls. When Asaph is strong, the Jews fall. So then at that time, at the time of davening, where the nefesh shalikis strengthens itself, and overpowers the nefesh shabamis, the market agvuris in the source of power, which is bina, when it's lizbenin begedulas Hashem, when it meditates into the greatness of Hashem, ulahelit ava azba Hashem kerish peish b'chol aymani shabali. Then, in other words, like this. At the time the nefesh kiss is meditating, and therefore he creates a very powerful love and fear of Hashem, he's not only functioning in thought, speech, and action, he's actually functioning in meditating intellect in greatness of God. And that causes a very powerful love and fear of Hashem at that moment, because the nefesh kiss is so powerful in intellect and emotions, it controls temporarily the intellect and the emotions of the Nefesh Abamis. But again, what does it mean? He puts it to sleep. It's dormanted, but it doesn't die. Because the second the meditation stops, the second the davening stops, it wakes up. It wakes again up. It wakes back up. It wakes up again and very powerful again. So he says, Abenani. The nefesh is by the bainani only controls constantly thought, speech, and action. To say it controls the nefesh abamis, which is the intellect and emotions of the nefesh abamis, it doesn't. The only time it has a slight control over it, it's meditating into the greatness of Hashem. So the seichel of the godly soul is powerful. And that awakens a love and a fear, which again make, makes the midas, the emotion, very powerful. Then he controls temporarily that nefesh shabbamis, and he says, "Vazai." Then his kafya sitracha shebuchol lasmoli. Then he taka breaks the evil of the yitzah nefesh shabbamis. Avo leinizbato legamri bebeinani. It doesn't. He can't get rid of it. He can only like 
put into sleep, put it to sleep. The only one that could do it is the tzaddik, only a tzaddik. Shenemer, that by the tzaddik it says, Libi cholil bekibi, the Dr. Rebbe quoted in the first parak of Tanya, that David HaMalach said, my heart is hollow within me. What do you mean? He killed his nefesh abamis. He doesn't have a nefesh abamis. is bera. And then the tzaddik, like we learned before in the parak about the tzaddik, he despises evil, either with the ultimate hatred if he's a tzaddik gomor, or or if he doesn't ultimately hate it, which is its incomplete tzaddik. But only a tzaddik has that ability to kill it. Avu Bebeini, the bottom line of the page, the Bainini, what he does at the time of davening, is that a chmoshu, like an analogy, ka'adam shiyoshim. A person goes to sleep. When you sleep, you're not functioning properly. The nefesh abamis goes to sleep. It's not functioning properly. Shiyochol, but the problem is, shiyochol lachzevaleya mishnasi, but it can wake up. After it has a good night's sleep, it wakes up. The same thing. Kach hara bebeinini, the yetzahar, the nefesh abamis of the beinini, is kiyoshin b'chol asmani, is like it's sleeping. Bishas kishmu tfila, at the time of kishmu and davening, like you said, when his heart is burning in the love of Hashem, then the Nefesh Abamid goes to sleep. But then it wakes up. Okay? So now, Dr. Rebbe is going to explain, based on this, we can understand the Gemara that Dr. Rebbe brought down on the first page of Tanya and asked the question. What was the Gemara? Rabbi, when the Gemara says, the Yitzhadik is judged by the Yitzhah the, 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 the Russia is judged by the Yitzhah The Bainini, both of them judge. Comes along Rabba and says, I am a Bainini. I am a Bainini. So Abayah said to him, What you, you can't let anybody, you're not letting anybody live. You, Rabbi, are a tzaddik. You're a tzaddik. And if you're only a baini, so what are we? Then we're a shayim. And secondly, like we learned, there has to be at least one tzaddik in a generation. If you're not, who is? So how could Takadava make a, Rabbi make a mistake? If a baini, on the first page of Tanya, Dr. Rabbi said, if a baini is one who is 50, 50, 50% mitzvahs, 50% avedas, how could Rabbi make a mistake to say he's a Bainini? It's humility, it's false humility, it's ridiculous. If somebody asks you, you are you Shema Shabbos? And you say, yes, it's not ego. It's a fact. You think Rabbi is going to say he's a Bainini, that means he 50% of his life he sinned. So therefore, the Alter Rebbe proves from that Gemara itself that the definition of a Bainini is one that never sins. Not in thought, not in speech, not in action. I, why isn't he a tzaddik? Because he still has a yetzahara. When doesn't the Bainini have a yetzahara? When does he put it to sleep? When he davens. So now Dr. Rebbe can say, now we understand out of humility why Rabbi said he was a Bainini. Why? Third line on page your test. Therefore, Rabbi said he was a Bainini. I, Avdale Pasik Pumim Megisa. His mouth never stopped learning, and as Al Trebbe quoted on the first page of Tanya, the Balachamavis couldn't even kill him. He never stopped learning. He said, Hashem and Rabbi learned Tera day and night. He he loved Hashem nonstop. Like at time, time of davening and, and Krishna, I'll explain in a second. It did of, and therefore it appeared to Rabbi in his own eyes, he was like a Bainani Hamispalo Kolayen. Rabbi maintained, and here's where humility makes sense. There is no question that Rabbi was a Tzadi Gomor. The great Rabbi of the Gemara was a Tzadi Gomor, without any question. Not only did he kill his Yetzirah, he transformed the Yetzirah. 
How could Rabbi think he's a Benyamin? Rabbi said, we just learned that a Benyamin, when he's davening and learning, he puts the Yetzirah to sleep. It becomes dysfunctional. What's the problem? After davening, he wakes up again. The Gemara says, why did Rabbi say it's a Benyamin? Dr. Rabbi is explaining because Rabbi thought he's a Benyamin who davens a whole day. In other words, out of modesty, Rabbi thought, maybe I didn't kill my Yetzirah. Maybe it's just comatose. Maybe I put it to sleep 24-7. How do I know I killed it? Maybe I didn't kill it. The reality was Rabbi killed it. But here now you can understand what modesty means. The reality was Rabbi killed the Yetzirah. Out of modesty, Rabbi seriously thought. By the way, he didn't say, I'm going to me for a joke. Rabbi thought, yes, the Yetzirah never is functioning. The Nefesh is not the intellect, not the emotions of the Nefesh Abamis are functioning. Rabbi said, I thought, I think, that I'm putting it to sleep a whole day. And the Alt Rebbe quotes an interesting Gemara. Kamai Medazal, like the Gemara says, Rabbi Yechon says this in Brachas, Halavai she yispalol adam kolayen kula. Halavai, a person, it would only be like, would it be a person daven a whole day? The Gemara in Brachas says an interesting statement. Halavai, it's a better way Hebrew word, it's used in Yiddish also. It would all, Halavai would only be that a guy should daven a whole day. What is that supposed to mean? What do you mean? He's supposed to daven a whole day. And when he's supposed to uh, work and sleep and eat and do everything else, what does it mean? So, what the is saying over here is much different. We don't mean saying the words. You can't say the words a whole day in davening. Even if you say one word every 10 minutes, you're still finished. The Rebbe is saying what the Gemara is, the Rebbe is explaining what the Gemara says. Halavai she yispalol adam kola yem kulei. Halavai, a person should be davening on the level of davening the whole day that is Yetzirah is sleeping the whole day. Halavai, that the person should, the Bainini shouldn't have to constantly fight, 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 fight. Evil thought, evil speech, evil, and throws him out and he doesn't do it. And that's why Rabbi made a mistake. Yes, Rabbi made a mistake. Rabbi was for sure a tzaddik. But if you say a Benini is 50 50, then Rabbi can't make a mistake. If you say a Benini sins, Rabbi can't make a mistake. Rabbi knew he didn't sin. He knew the Malachim of his couldn't even kill him. What did Rabbi think out of humility? And modesty that he thought he didn't kill the eight Sahara, he comatose it, he put it to sleep 24-7. Well, we mentioned before Rabbi died when he was 40. So the 40 years of his life, he put the Nefshabamas to sleep. But now it makes sense. So now Dr. Rebbe is going to ask a question. Is this real or not real? By the Bainini. Possible. What do you mean by real? Well, we'll see in a second. Vine. Me this avazu, this attribute of Ava, which is said by the Bainin in Bishasa Tvila, that the Bainini at the time of Tvila awakens the strong love and therefore he puts the Nefshabamas to sleep. I the Iskabris and Nefeshalikis by overpowering the intellect and feelings of the Nefshalikis and he puts it to sleep. So now the question is like this. Compared to the level of tzaddikim. Who serve God with the ultimate truth. This love of a Bainani at the time of tefillah is not emes. Compared to the level of a tzaddik. Why? Because it goes away after davening. 
Now the Rebbe is explaining now, and he's giving encouragement to the Bainani, by the way. The Bainani puts the Nefesh Obamas to sleep during that week. Now, is that real or not real? Is it MS? Does he actually get rid of it? So now the question is, so Dr. Rebbe says, compared to the level of a tzaddik who kills the Yetzirah 24-7, the fact that a Baini only puts it to sleep during davening and it wakes up afterwards means even during davening it's not real. Okay, let's talk a little bit about MS because it's a fundamental aspect in Chassidus. Very fundamental aspect in Chassidus. Temporary truth is a contradiction of terms. Sometimes true is a contradiction of terms. The definition of MS is eternity. It goes from the beginning through the end, through the middle, all the way to the end. Okay? We mentioned this many times in the classes, but let's talk about it again. It says in Svarim, the word MS, Aleph, Mem, Saf. Okay? Aleph is the first letter of the Aleph base. Mem is the middle letter of the Aleph base. Saf is the last letter of the Aleph base. Why is MS, Aleph, Mem, Saf? Because the definition of truth is it starts from the beginning through the middle all the way to the end. Chassidus says, the Pasik says, we say it in davening every day, Titein MS li Yaakov. Yaakov, the attribute of MS. Avram is Chesed. Yitzchak is Gvura. Yaakov is Teferes, which is Midas or MS. Titein MS li Yaakov. Why is Yaakov the attribute of MS? So we see it in the Mishkan. In the Mishkan, they had the walls of the Mishkan, okay? Okay, there were walls on each side of the Mishkan. What held the walls together? Okay, so the Torah says in Parsha's Truma, there were hooks on top, hooks in the bottom, and they had poles. The top pole went through the whole wall, holding all those boards together. The bottom pole held all the Bottom. So it's connected top and bottom. Okay, that was one wall. Now, how did you connect the perpendicular wall? The Michigan had walls on three sides. How did you connect the this wall at the end to the wall on the next side? So the Gemaris, the Pasik says there was Briach Hatichain, there was the middle pole. Mavriach min hakotze el hakotze went from one end to the next, meaning like this: the hooks on top were here, the hooks in the bottom were here. Then there was through and through here in the middle, a hole that went through each pole. There was a stick that went through each hole, and then when this when the wall ended. The stick miraculously bent and went through to the next wall, and then miraculously bent on the third wall. That's what the Pasik says. It was Briach Hatichain, the middle pole, Mavriach Min Hakotze El Hakotze, that went from one end to the next. Now, we know the top pole says in Kabbalah and Medrash, Medrash also says it. The top pole is Avraham, the bottom pole is Yitzchak. And the middle pole is Yaakov Avinu. What is the level of Yaakov? Mavriach min hakotza lakotza titit emes li Yaakov. Yaakov is midas or emes. What is the definition of emes? It goes from the beginning, through the middle, all the way to the end. The numerical value of emes, Aleph Mem Sof, is 441. Four, four and one together, equals nine. Four and four and one equals nine. So it's called in, in trade, there's a mathematical word for it. When trade is called Midas, um, Misper Cotton, 
Mitzvah you take the numerical value of the word and you add those numbers together. The numerical value of MS is nine in Mitzvah Katan, 441. Now, why is nine MS? Any multiple of nine equals nine. Nine times two is 18. One and eight is nine. 27, two and seven. 36, 45, 54, you know, 63. Any multiple of nine equals nine. And therefore in Tata, nine is the true number because there's an expression of Rabag in Tanakh, ha'emes maskim la'atzme mi kol tzad. Truth agrees to itself in every aspect. Something which is sometimes true is not true. It is either true or not true. In fact, the Gemara says there's a halacha that Chassidus brings down in all the rabbis my modern. In the base of Migdash, they needed mayim chayim, literally means living water. And the Gemara says there were certain rivers that dried up once in seven years. Not as a mechazen achad b'shavua. Shavua over there means seven years. A river that dried up once in seven years was not kosher to be used in the base of Migdash, even in the six years that it flowed. I, six years it flowed, why can't I use that flowing water? So the Gemara says, because it dried up one year, that means it's not real living water. It eventually dries up. So therefore, even during the six years, it's not real. Because it eventually stops being real. And if it's reality, MS, everywhere you go is MS. So therefore, the fact that the Bainani puts his neshama to sleep only during davening, and after davening it wakes up, so that davening time by the Bainani, compared to the level of the tzaddik that kills it continuously, that Avedad al Rebbe says is not MS Lamite. It's not 100% real. Because it stopped after davening, it wakes up. Which shows that even during the davening, it wasn't real. It's late. But al Rebbe concludes, and we'll learn that Mishra next week. al Rebbe says, though, that compared to the level of Tzadik, it's not real. But compared to the Bainadi, it is real. On his level, it's real. And al Rebbe will explain what that means. So now the Rebbe is explaining the Bainani when he davened is like a tzaddik. He puts it to sleep, but it's not the real tzaddik because it wakes up after the davening. That shows even when he was sleeping, it wasn't real. Okay, once again, the class, uh, don't forget to count Ahmed tonight. Tonight was 32. Uh, the class is next week. Amir Tashem will start at 8.30. Uh, again, once again, tonight's class is sponsored by my wife and I in honor of my father-in-law's yardstick, Misham Shirev and Aliyah. Amen. 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 Do you have a barbecue tomorrow? What? Is there a barbecue tomorrow? Tomorrow night, the Shul Chabad of Beverly Hills has a barbecue at 6.30. You have to reserve with Rabbi Mendel Shusterman. If you live Thank out you very of much, town, Rabbi. If you live out of town, you can come. By, by the time you get there, you probably miss it. <laughs> have a good, good night, night, everybody. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good, good night, night, Rabbi. Shabbat shalom.